The West, former colonial powers and the US, has looted the rest of the world for the past few centuries. They have done so through control of the world's reserve currency, the English pound and then the US dollar and use of their military. Look at what happened in China. Losing their silver reserves to China over their purchase of tea, silk, and porcelain, the British addicted the Chinese to opium and sold it to them, fighting two wars with China to maintain their right. To do so, the Americans piggybacked onto the British effort selling Turkish opium instead of the Indian produce provided by Britain. Read, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, on how the West lends third world nations enormous sums secured by raw materials. The US dollar should have lost its reserve currency status under Nixon when gold reserves dwindled. The US kept its place via the petrodollar, with the Saudis agreeing to sell oil only for US dollar. The US has maintained its position only by force, eliminating any regimes that sought to change this arrangement. Up until now, the rest of the world has viewed the dollar US as a safe haven. Trillions of dollars are held overseas as cash, travelers' checks, a safer way to hold cash. You can replace stolen funds and dollar US denominated debt. US dollars are such a safe haven that good counterfeits are preferred to local currency in places like Africa. The US has never revoked any issuance of currency. In the 80s, Russian refugees arriving in New York were turning in pre-1917 US banknotes at face value, worth far more to currency collectors that has been hidden away from before the revolution. Given the prevalence of US currency in illegal transactions, the US could end the sale of illegal drugs by simply canceling 100 United States dollars notes, allowing a limited exchange requiring an explanation of funds. Drug lords could not find enough people to exchange the cash they hold if a time limit and dollar limit are enforced. If, at some point, other nations and individuals no longer trust the dollar, they will start exchanging currency and dollar-denominated debt for tangible assets. Better to hold real, if overpriced, assets than worthless paper. Unless the US forbids the use of dollars held overseas to buy US assets, all the dollars held overseas will rush back to the US and buy up everything at any price. One analyst believes this is the end game. The US lives off the rest of the world's cheap raw materials while sequestering US reserves. When the US dollar goes bust, cancel all the dollars held outside the US. US trade with the world comes to a halt, but the US can rebuild using the reserves hidden away, protected by our military. So, two paths. The US broke, owned by everyone else or the US a pariah in world trade, isolated but rebuilding from scratch with the holders of US debt broke. Neither path is pretty. The idea the world would be better served with a single world currency has been growing in looms as a real possibility in the near future. Many people see this as a major part of the end game, or something that will constitute a needed reset to a global economy and financial system that has gone off track. Throughout history, before an economic collapse, the masses and society tend to believe things are financially stable. Only after the economy goes over the edge of an abyss and is in free fall does reality set in. It is not by accident that blinders have been placed upon us but it is the result of distractions being thrown in our path by those wishing to hold onto their power over us. It is wise to remember that when things do become critical, those in power will not be kind to us but that we will be thrown under the bus without a thought. Over the last 100 years, equity markets have been a primary tool used by the public to measure the economy. In some ways, the stock markets have become a kind of switch the elites can push at any given time to energize the masses distracting them from the dangers lurking in their economic future. When markets rise despite warnings from negative fiscal indicators, the masses become optimistic. During every upswing of stocks the elites claim they see the green shoots of prosperity, however, these shoots seem to always turn brown and die. We have been leaping from one recession to another even though central banks claim they now hold the key to generating true and honest growth. The truth is the current stock market bolstered by easy money and stock buybacks is a poor reflection of the real economy and what is happening in many areas across a broad swath of the world. History indicates that establishment economists trained and educated in the ivory towers of academia are perhaps the most useless of all analysts and perpetually wrong. Only independent analysts have ever been able to predict anything of value when it comes to our economic future and that is because they have the advantage of not being blinded by the propaganda and brainwashed by lies flowing from those in control.
Time and time again it has been proven the appearance of prosperity means nothing if the fundamentals do not support the optimism. A bullish stock market, a high dollar index, and low unemployment mean nothing and are unsustainable if generated by false methods and fiat money. We have seen time and time again throughout history that fundamentals matter. The markets cannot hide from true price discovery forever. The stock market with its boom and bust cycles has proven to be a false indicator of what is really unfolding. Manipulation by the central banks has rendered this indicator of economic health useless. The problem we face is the horrible options in fiat money, massive debt, and the growth of international businesses have all come together in an explosive way. The banking elites are positioning themselves to avoid blame for this disaster while the rest of us are being sold on the most elaborate recovery con game ever conceived and perpetuated by those with the most to gain. Those in charge of our financial machinery have indicated to the public their desire for more power. This means creating a truly global centralized economic system and a highly controlled world currency framework dominated by a select cult of banking oligarchs. This would, in effect makes the rest of the human race their slaves. Over the years, many articles have referred to a 1988 write-up in the financial magazine, The Economist, titled, Get Ready for a World Currency by 2018. It outlined the framework for a global currency system administered by the International Monetary Fund. This new system was and is floated on the premise that only by erasing all national economic sovereignty can true stability be obtained. It requires governments to borrow from the World Central Banking Authority, rather than printing currency to finance their infrastructure programs. This dovetails with efforts to create such a system under the total control of the IMF which should raise the concern of every American. We are hearing more warnings and witnessing a push to destabilize the dollar as the reserve currency by China and several other countries. It is also occurring as Orwellian governments float the idea of going cashless as a way to gain further control over our lives. For years the IMF has been openly discussing the ascension of the SDR to replace the dollar as the world reserve currency. Many developing nations that are deep in debt are already asking for help from the IMF due to volatility across the world and the BRICS are pushing hard to remove the dollar as the world reserve. This makes it a question of when such a currency reset will occur and in its wake bury the majority of the middle class and poor throughout America. There is no way around it, the elites are positioned and merely waiting for a geopolitical disaster or catastrophe so overwhelming that when the time arrives they can portray themselves as our saviors during the chaos. The demise of the dollar harkens back to when President Nixon severed its tie to gold. First, it's crucial to understand that at the very core of our global economy is a financial system dominated by the US dollar which has been deemed the reserve currency. The USD is unique in that it grants the US the privilege of having a national currency which at the same time serves as the global reserve currency. This was solidified toward the end of World War II with the Bretton Woods Agreement, which was accepted because the US agreed to offer sovereign nations holding dollars a right to exchange these dollars for gold at a fixed price. However, with Nixon's action in 1971, the USD became a fiat currency backed by nothing, the supply of which can be arbitrarily altered and manipulated by a group of unelected bureaucrats in charge of the Federal Reserve. This money system represents the most powerful tool on the planet. The new world order and globalization pushed by many world leaders and the rich elite that tout larger, more cooperative governments under one financial unit will benefit us all, feeds into the world currency scenario. Many Americans are oblivious to the fact we gain a great deal by our status of the dollar being the reserve currency by which all others tend to be measured. This means we have a great deal to lose if it is dethroned and stand to suffer the most if the dollar declines in value. Those who will be crucified are the middle-class Americans whose wealth is locked into or are holding long-term USD bonds thinking they are a safe investment. Currently, a huge mismatch exists between the use of the dollar in the global financial system and the US share of the world economy. This is why China, Russia, and several other countries that are acutely aware of this have been taking major steps to transition to a more multipolar currency world. This is also why we should prepare and expect that in coming years the world will adopt a completely different global financial system from the one chaotically birthed in the 1970s and when this occurs the USD will lose its total dominance on the world stage, resulting in major implications for America. While many people see this coming, several opinions exist as to how it will unfold and while we engage in speculation, 
nobody really knows what the world financial system will look like 10 or 20 years down the road. Few of us who continue to cherish freedom can get excited about transitioning away from the USD and being placed under the thumb of the IMF or an oppressive nation-state currency controlled by a country like China. That is why many of us think the dollar will be ripped from us during a time of crisis when Americans are open to accepting any solution offered to them as a way to ease their woes. While people point to cryptocurrencies as an option we should remember politics plays a massive role in how this all unfolds. To Americans, the fate of dollar-dominated assets and their value when the dust finally settles should be a huge concern but most Americans fail to grasp the implications. It is my contention the transition to a world currency will take a far greater toll on paper assets than tangible goods. While recognizing the flaws of the dollar and our current system I have come to believe the other fiat currencies such as the euro and yen hold even less merit. This includes cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. Regardless, in the end, we should expect to be told and not given an option as to what is coming. If events unfold in the way those promoting a one-world currency have planned it will be a dagger in the heart of freedom. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.